Hello and welcome to Only Stupid Answers. My name is... There's a thing Sam on the screen Basher. probably. Thank you. Uh-huh. This is... DJ. This is... Maxine. Thank you for joining Maxine, us. Because we're going to be talking about Doom Patrol, the hit series on uh, DC Universe. If you guys are watching this review and you've never downloaded DC Universe, shame on you. you can, there's a free trial. You. Free trial probably. You could probably. There's discount codes. You should try it I'm out. clear if there's still a free trial. I'm not sure. Probably. That would that'd be a smart move, into. honestly. Yeah. DC Universe would be a really smart move. Because uh, you, more people need to be watching this show. But specifically today, we're doing a spoiler filled. This is filled to the. This is bursting with spoilers, gang. Of season one, episode nine, Beard Patrol. Vic and Rita face a dangerous man called the Beard Hunter, who's been activated by the Bureau of Normalcy to find Niles Caller. This, That's is, true. A, this is a really good episode. Quick, right off the top, real quick, right at the tippy tippy top of this episode, Beard Hunter eats drain hair and i have never paused something so hard before and i walked away from what i was watching because hair makes me feel so gross like i it just reminds me it, it's like he ate cat throw up mm-hmm. it's like a cat threw up and he went <laughs> he, and not he, like when he pooed it i yeah, he, he pooed it, it was it, it yeah. was so gro- like it, it, I don't know why hair grosses me out so much, but as soon as we figured out like what Beard Hunter is, like I thought like he just like psychically senses da da da, like he just has like a scent or whatever. No, it's so gross. I love it. Beard Hunter's great. I got so physically ill during that scene. Both of both times he did it. And mm-hmm. I not only did I get ill when he was doing it, but I got ill as Vic is figuring out wh- how he did it. And he's mm-hmm. like, so you you did oh mm-hmm. you went and you took the. Oh, I was just sitting there so with him. Mm-hmm. It, it's not the fact that people suck on hair. I don't like it, but it happens. People take their own hair and they, have you never oh, seen this? Oh, yes. I was like. No, they take their hair and they'll suck on it. Uh-huh. Or like. Yeah, that was like a thing kids, kids did. Kids did. Yeah. There's dust in the air. Sometimes you get a piece of hair in your food, in your mouth. But oh, going to the. D- Actively. D- oh. Uh-huh. Choosing to it's into just, it, uh, way into it, way into he was it. All about like, it. T- unbelievably aroused by it. It's yeah. crazy. And I like when he's like, uh, like eyeing that dude in the grocery store, and I'm mm-hmm. like, this is funny, but also what? Yeah. But by the way, that actor, he, he did a great job. I genuinely he, he really, really did. Did. Oh, so yeah. good. Also, great that he's actually genuinely is dangerous. Yeah. Beard Hunter is like, I thought, oh, this is funny. No, he actually is a threat to these people, which mm-hmm. is crazy. If, yeah. if Superman's hair fell out and he went. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That Superman probably couldn't land a punch on him because he now understands this person's essence and is able to like dodge their moves and stuff like that. Superman oh. might still be able to get him because he might not be able to move faster than Superman. Yeah. yeah, but he might be able to know exactly how to take him out right there. But he shouldn't Maybe. be able to move Martha. faster than Cyborg, and he is. It's true. It's interesting it's true. because this character is a great juxtaposition. He he is the butt of the joke, mm-hmm. but based on. How the normalcy people, the Bureau of Normalcy picked him, mm-hmm. and w- mom, the meatloaf. He's like on a keto diet. Yeah, very he's keto he's diet. On a keto and diet. All of those things, but then he's dangerous AF. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we don't usually see those characters that are the butt of the joke are also the person that can ruin your whole life. Mm-hmm. And I loved seeing the dichotomy of those two things in this one goober of a person yes. oh yeah like I, a character as dumb of a name as robot man you find out has one of the most tragic stories and genuinely is a really compelling character flip it one of the dumbest ideas for a character is someone who hunts people via via not head hair <laughs> face hair lower face hair <laughs> and that is somehow more connected to the brain than his head hair <laughs> yeah. just beard hair so he can only hunt men or women who happen to grow like longer face hair you we honestly, need one of those this episode you <laughs> have yeah. to stop talking about it because i feel legit nauseous well like, let's, it, uh, it's let's so gross touch on something that i really like this episode is so vic uh brings read up to date on danny the street great yes. episode which i just small criticism an episode exploring Dan in the Street is great. Someone boiling it down to us and then see like, oh, wait, this is, um, this is silly a little bit. But I did. Danny, best character on TV yeah. all year. Silly when you said it in a sentence. Yeah, so he, <laughs> she, he shows Rita this comic and she goes to the what, what would be called the... It's been called the Charles Atlas ad. It's from... Uh, it's how Mac became a man ad and the person inside of it is gone, which is a reference to a uh, classic Grant Morrison character, Flex Mentallo. And there have been rumors based on casting stuff that we will be seeing this character this season. I think the comic, showing the comic, 
Oh, he's look at him. He's in the middle of the comic book pages. That's great. Do you that think makes that, me so happy. That means that we will see him this season, or do you think this was the version of us seeing him? Either this season? way, I'm kind of fine with it. But I would like to. I I think with the way this show's handled all these other characters, it'd be really cool to see somebody so weird. I mean, they added a bunch of epi- We still have six episodes after this, which is crazy. That, that is so crazy. So I think we have room for Flex Mentalo, hero of the beach. Hero of the beach, which <laughs> shows up, which shows up when he uses his powers. Yes, it's it's so weird. So, it's so like I I know this show's weird. This is extremely weird. So, he is the beach bodybuilder, but fictional in a world that is fictional. It's so weird. So if you guys remember, I because I collected older comics, there was the ads of like, hey, do you want to build, basically trying to get nerds to sign up for a wake out, workout program. And there, the specifically, I think it was called How Mac Became a Man. It was one way before my time of this dweeby kid, and he's supposed to get jacked from doing this weight program, and he looks like Flex, Flex Mentale. Basically, Grant Morrison made that fictional ad character a real character in his comic has come to life and uh he's also the the hero of muscle mystery mm-hmm. when he, <laughs> he discovered in his working out he discovered a muscle that when he flexes it it alters reality huh yeah yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> it's like this show's bonkers but this is like next level crazy coke bender in the <laughs> 80s type of writing this is insane also it's part of grant morrison considers a part of his hyper sigil series which i with what trilogy is? between the invisibles and the filth and so i looked up hyper sigil and that was an interesting rabbit hole to go down what it was there a part rap- of chaos magic it's part of chaos magic so you create sigils to generate uh specific outcomes and grant morrison was writing these comics as hyper sigils to create outcomes and it actually kind of fucking worked uh, because in The Invisibles, the character King Mob, who's a representation of him, got shot, and his lung uh, his lung collapsed. And Grant Morrison's lung collapsed in real life after he wrote that. And so then from then on, there on out, King Mob was just getting laid all the time. Uh, and was Grant? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. You I hope. mean, duh, he's Grant Morrison. But anyway, the point is, there's so many. There's And, and whether you think that's completely bullshit or not, there's so many ideas in work like this that it's such a rich experience because it's not just like, hey, what if superheroes? There's so many different ideas. Like, hey, you could have an explorer in 1913 have sex with a cave woman. And it's apparently the love of his life. That was the vibe I got. This was Niles ride or die. Never forget. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like the poor that poor woman in the Doom Patrol Patrol episode ain't got nothing on this cave woman. But okay, let me ask you this, because different because she's still cave woman. Yeah. But did this remind you at all of of our friend that we don't particularly like on Legend of Tomorrow? Like was this a little bestiality? Not to me because it was a person. But is, is she fully a a person? I get what you're saying. I think it were okay. Evolution mm-hmm. wise, where is Just she a on the step behind <laughs> or ahead? Or ahead. Because she's um going because she has a full beard and she made ghost <laughs> ghost rabbit dog. Like if we could go back <laughs> Things come out. Whatever yeah. that is. we could time travel. How long back could I go before I can't have sex with <laughs> People. Here's my or, question. Or I see what you're saying, and I don't have an answer for it. I, but well, here's my question. Here's the mechanics. The answer is you could. The moral question is, I uh, answer is I don't know if you should. Yeah, I don't there know you if go. you should. Opposable thumbs. Opposable thumbs. <laughs> I <laughs> I wonder why I this I'm okay with, <laughs> and and shape of water I'm okay with. Oh, you are. Shape if of water, anything, you shape are. of water yeah. I encourage. <laughs> and for Mona, I'm like wait dial at this back a sec. I think it's because we I'm getting off on tangent. I think shape of water person is a creature that can communicate and appear sentient. It's it's like somebody having sex with an alien. That's an animal. This is at least another person. It's another type of person. And that was something interesting. This is actually so Supergirl, you're okay having sex with Jimmy Olsen. Yes. Well maybe not for other reasons, mm-hmm. but for the alien reasons we're okay. We're okay with. The, and this ties into something that's interesting about the way this episode characterizes characterizes Niles and it's it's a similar to the way the show's always characterized him because it's very complex because at first it's like he's a cool dude he's not a hunter he doesn't want to hurt anybody but it's also he's clearly sees this creature as inferior is very exploitative of this creature for a majority of their time together and even once he's come out the other end he's grown as a person but I still don't know if he's a good person (laughs) 
Well, how is he exploiting her in the beginning of this story? He doesn't, he's, he's not exploiting her, but it's clear that he wants to. He wants to take her to the... Bureau of Normalcy. Uh, Bureau of there Normalcy. we go. Before okay. it's the oddities, I think, yeah, at that yeah, point. Yeah, it, it's more fun. And <laughs> basically make his career off this person. And it's all gotcha. about what you can gain from this as opposed to, hey, I'm interacting with another sentient creature gotcha because he's like doing that thing where it's like he's writing notes and like walking around her and falls in the water and yeah. okay so i get okay i get what you're saying there because i'm like he's pretty much at her beck and yes. the call like but he can't do anything right now because his leg turned into <laughs> splinters like yeah. it was bad like was that was great. his bone sticking out right yes yeah. i thought it was a stick in his leg mm. but it looked like one whole bone just went right out of his leg yeah, yeah. that I would not put that spackle or whatever they put on her le- well, on his leg. I don't if think that's going to work. You gave me 10 options for what his backstory was, <laughs> and, and this was nine of them. Mm-hmm. I think I still would have picked the other one. Not with what I would prefer, but with what I thought. Expected. Like, yeah. I did not expect us to do a Niles love story of a cave woman situation here. Yeah, and you know what's Agreed. Even- Agreed. Agreed. And it worked, mm-hmm. which is the crazier part. Also agreed, but you know what's even weirder is I don't even know if this explains how he's lived so long. I don't think so. I don't either. know if this explains that. Because I, I feel like what we got was she has lived forever. She's lost her people, but she can still live basically forever or whatever. Mm-hmm. You're talking about the cave woman. The cave woman. Yeah. And then they are t- they together, they are a couple, whatever. Then friend comes back who we thought was dead, face messed up, looks really cool. Mm-hmm. And he dies to hide the secret. Yes. Niles chooses not to save him to hide yeah. her and leaves the lady and he choose yeah. not to save her he on purpose brings him down a, a creaky ice place he does yeah but like but like he true he, yeah. he tricks him into kind of killing himself um no he kills him he kills him but yeah like mm-hmm. he, he in this scenario he didn't do anything himself to make that happen He's still responsible for the death of that person, 100%. I just mean, in his mind, he has enough yeah. of an explanation around it that he could be like, well, I didn't do anything. That was all on him. But Listen, anyways, I just left the guy in a train that was crashing from 15 stories. It's Batman there. saying, I don't have to save you to Rachel Ghoul when the train plows into a building. You killed him. You killed him. You killed him. Yeah, you <laughs> killed him. You had 100, you 100% killed him. Yeah. Um, and you know what? Maybe okay. Yeah. And maybe with this guy. Yeah, That's okay. Yeah. Honestly, like, you came back with an army to find this person? Whatever. But, um, no, I don't think we ever learn if he became immortal. I think we're led to believe by the end that something happened when they doinked. And then maybe mm. that they, oh. that maybe that. I That's what I yeah. assumed. Because he's like, I feel like I'm not aging anymore. I feel younger. Yeah. So either that or the ceremony where they watch... They burn a guy and then the whatever that whatever that creature is. You said up. jackalope and I was like, yeah, jackalope, but also like Wendigo kind of thing. Exactly, because jackalope because jackalope is just a rabbit with antlers. antlers yeah, which this was not. Wish we're real. <laughs> we all do. This was something. This, there was a lot of things mixed into this. Wendigo is a good point of reference. Yeah, I thought you wanted to say something. No, no, I'm just still dealing with everything that happened with him and this cave woman. And the Bureau of Normalcy is a concept I'm just obsessed with. Mm -hmm. I think it's awesome. And then the very end, I don't know what to make of that either. There's no, I'm totally satisfied feeling so, so, so not satisfied, Mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. Unsatisfied. But you're left wanting more. Uh, Yes. And I love that in all areas. Uh, while right before we were taping, I was I was talking about how I really liked that when um, Niles is back at the bureau and kind of like playing the role to kind of cover up for his new uh, lover is the way to describe it. And of course, uh, Mr. Nobody shows up. And when I heard the clap, I was like, okay, it's Mr. Nobody, and it's they're not going to spring for the CG budget because he's he clearly can look up. They're in a memory. He'll look like a person. It's like no, he looks like his messed up self. And then when they go to the white dreamscape. He now looks like he should have looked in the flashback, because he doesn't care. Because he's 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 lunacy. Like there's nothing there's nothing tying Mister Nobody down to anything, which I thought was interesting. I don't quite know what Mister Nobody could get from this knowing where this person is that he doesn't already have. He doesn't he need can immortality. Do basically anything. He yeah. can create anything. He creates things that are fictional to become real. He can yeah. drive people insane, and he's existed over now what we see possibly at least 100 years yeah or close to it so what do you think his the deal is then maybe it's a way to reconstitute himself or become like i don't know like maybe this this whatever this creature has is allows him to 
I don't know. Because boredom and chaos is not enough of a reason. <laughs> Maybe he can't die and he wants to die. That could be a story too. Yeah. He can't. He is outside of like this dimension. Yeah. So any like even if you shot at him right now, it's like no. You hear his voice everywhere. He's like um, omnipresent or whatever omnid would be yeah. that. But um, it, I'm mm-hmm, not sure which mm-hmm. word it would be. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's like maybe he doesn't want that anymore. Yeah. It seems hellish that he is aware <laughs> that he's in a TV show. Yeah. I think I would not want to know that information. So maybe in that ceremony, maybe it would just, uh, like, uh, the opposite of being able to live forever, yeah. he could kind of work it back, um, jailbreak it a little bit, and make it so he can die. Speaking of knowing you're in a TV show, this isn't exactly what's happening here, but who's going to play me in the movies? Mm-hmm. I loved that line. Because I took down Cyborg, which, by yeah. the way... Grid's terrifying. Mm-hmm. Grid sucks. Okay, but this is what Mike, what I was talking about before in the non-spoiler review that we taped. I'm confused on, not confused. I Which, use by that the way, it's patreon.com slash super TV. Nope. Patreon.com patreon. only, only stupid, stupid answers. answers. You can this click right up there. That's shows right. super TV. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We got there eventually. Mm-hmm. Is when Grid goes off and the explosion happens, are, why are we all okay? Which part? Uh, what do you? Which which part? Because it mean? looks like a pretty destructive explosion. Yeah. Oh. What do you mean? Which part? Sorry, I mean uh, I was confused. You know, which the, part you're confused during the explosion, yeah. uh-huh. like, mm-hmm. and everybody goes back, and then everybody's fine. Mm-hmm. Why is that? It's a sonic cannon, so sound. So it's um I, I it's, uh, you could maybe explain that like it's not meant to like kill people. It's like when people walk away from an explosion behind them, and it's like. No, man, no. You'd be knocked on your ass. You'd be, and knocked, you'd be able to yeah. hear. You'd like, have a sunburn pretty bad on yeah, the back so of your neck. Your ears, everything ringing. I just thought uh, when we're talking about how dangerous he is, I, it's hard to measure with Elastigirl because she, I would think that she wouldn't be as knocked on because things would mold and mend and yeah. whatever. But I want to see somebody how his powers affect people. Yeah. And we did see it when his finger got blown off and got stuck in Cliff's arm. We did see that. So, by, and by the way, what we're seeing here is that Grid senses a threat. And so basically Grid's saying, I, I got this and kind of like leaving Vic out of the loop. Because it's like, well, you're the, I like the idea of, it, maybe they didn't, exp- they didn't explain this, but it's like, no, you're the vulnerable part. So mm-hmm. I'll take care of this. This is fine. Yeah. I'm already a- anticipating everything that you want and what would you would like to know. It's crazy. But this isn't his dad. It's not his dad doing it. Any- it's the AI and it might be something else. It, I think it's something else for sure, but I don't think it's his dad. It's interesting because the idea of Grid was first introduced in Forever Evil, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it was fine. Like, it was just like, oh. And he looks, looks cool. Yeah, yeah, he looks cool. And the idea of the robot part being different, but like the way they're characterizing, it's interesting. It's, I always love this is my favorite part of adaptations when they take an okay comic idea and they reconstitute it in the story they're telling and suddenly it comes to life mm-hmm. uh i think that's really cool and so uh, this is an that's aspect grid of, for you yeah like grid, grid like, is an aspect of cyborg that i never cared about really well grid also didn't there was no hint to that being a thing period and yeah. then all of a sudden we needed another villain and so grid popped off of cyborg's body and was yeah. like yeah, and i'm here and so the, and you're like, this what, one, what happened this yeah. is a very organic way to to not only um give cyborg an antagonist but also to put him in a similar position as the rest of the doom patrol people where it's like this is a nightmare like this is a, this this is he's of the one he's the most super of all of them but even him it's it's an affliction Mm-hmm. that he's trying to deal with. And I think that's the arc that these characters are going through is learning how to not only overcome, but use these things to be, be better. It, I, Except maybe in Grit's case, because uh, it's scary. It's he also is, yeah. interesting how half of the Doom Patrol, you don't know by seeing them that there's an issue, and mm-hmm. half of them you do. Yeah. And the, the societal um, crossover with that, where... And Cyborg's literally down the middle. Half yeah, of them looks okay, and the other half doesn't look so yeah, hot. because we've got uh, Robot Man yeah. and uh, Mummy over mm-hmm. there. And then, we, <laughs> and then we've got the ladies who, like, you walk into a bar, and the ladies are sitting there. All you're thinking is hot chicks yeah. like you're not thinking wow this is a nightmare situation one person yeah. turns into oatmeal and the other one turns into a, a son yeah. a full son <laughs> full. yeah son daddy yeah son yeah. daddy yeah that one and that's not even the worst mm-hmm. that's not yeah. the worst there's a wait, lot wait, of bad which the, one is the worst the I, nun the was, nun was the terrifying the nun was very scary none was scary let, don't I, let that one up I don't know which one is worse I don't know what the uh, nun's capable of but definitely I think Hammerhead's bad. pretty bad Karen Karen's bad Karen's real bad. Karen's bad because it's bad without you knowing it's bad. 
Well, at least, but I could get a, I could have a glass of wine with Karen. Mm. True. And she would make you love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whether you <laughs> so want to or I'm not. I'm feeling good. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ooh, bad news. Yeah, no, that's a, I like that observation. That's a great observation. There's uh, this episode. Uh, let's, uh, I think we kind of covered everything, but kind of winding down to the end. We see Beard Hunter like on the case for Niles. He knows where he is. Cyborg feels awful, and like they're able to track him. So we're gonna go fi- figure out what the heck happened to Beard Hunter. All we see him is do is walk down a staircase and find a stuffed scarecrow of Niles. Yeah. With what it sounds like is Mister Nobody speaking through him. How right? Am I am I misremembering? I could not recognize. I did not recognize the voice, but with Alan Tudyk, it could be. And also that Wendigo jackalope creature being which, there. Being there. So there's a lot, there's a lot happening, and this was a lot, like a lot of Doom Patrol, uh, like cliffhangers where it's like, huh? <laughs> yeah. I what? I think it's a Mister Nobody thing because if he's able to make um, what we heard were vinyl men made out of records mm-hmm. fighting people, and he somehow enlisted a rat to mm-hmm. go on a revenge streak, I'm like he could probably get that Wendigo thing to pop up, a, a version of that thing, yeah, and make a puppet. I think he could do those I things. I thought it was so crazy how much it looked like Niles. Yeah. It's very cool. How did you guys make a scarecrow look like Niles that much? Mm-hmm. He's got no eyes. And it yeah. had his hair. Had yeah. enough of his hair. It had enough of his essence for... Good job, art department. For the beard hunt to get lost and go there. And but like the phone call was great. Him doing the suit-up thing where he can't get the thing buckled and everything, yeah. that was really funny. Um, him going after and talking to his mom. He was like, yeah, I think... Uh, like, I think it went really well. Like, I found Cyborg. I'm going after Niles. I'm like, mm-hmm. honey, I'm so proud of you. But also, like, kind of annoyed at him and not, not really knowing what he's talking about. Like, yeah. it was a really... I'm bummed that he's probably dead. He's probably dead. I hope not. I hope not. Because I like this... He's so overpowered. These supporting characters that, like, Beard Hunter. We got Animal Vegetable Mineral Man. Mineral Man, excuse me. Danny the Street. I like these wacko... Um, recurring characters that I'm hoping show up season after season. I hope they're not dead also, but if this show's proven one thing to us, it's that they can pull a million of these out. So yeah. even if they are dead, we'll have new ones we love. <laughs> so I'm not th- too concerned. I did like the joke where it's like, why don't you have a beard? And it's like, ge- skin disorder. <laughs> Genetic disorder. I can't do it. Hormone disorder. Hormone That's what disorder. Is, yeah, he can't, he can't grow a beard. Clearly that actor that, can, but it I, was funny. That actor did a really good job because there's so many ways that this character would have been kind of grating. Mm-hmm. And, and it, the balance of like, annoying but endearing but like really and actually kind of proud of him mm-hmm. like it's like oh you're scary i don't really don't want you to be i'm bummed you're on the side of the side of the like demons on this if you yeah. were on the side of the angels i'd be like yeah it, he'd be a very effective team member unrelated i think i just discovered i had been playing footsies with dj for the last 20 minutes i well, thought he was a pole did <laughs> you find that easter egg in this episode let us know in the comments down below well gang any uh, final thoughts any reviews any dun, dun, dun? oh niles might be a monster by the end of it we he was willing to sell out his whole uh team did we talk about oh, that, that spoiler free or in this that episode line. that line that line yeah, yeah, where, where he's like i don't care what you do to them i'll never i'll, I'll ne- i don't want to never get it out of me what because in the way he says it is not like I want to protect her. It's like I don't want you to have the satisfaction of breaking me. Mm-hmm. Hey, man. Hey, don't make it about you. It is about him, though. But I mm-hmm. don't. I wonder if he's uh, puffing out his chest here and lying. I, I didn't know how truthful that statement was. Um, I'm I, hoping it's not. With the information we got, where like um, Robot Man's talking with Silas Stone, and he's like, "Well, I had a bunch of schematics for how you're supposed to look, but Niles didn't want to change it because Niles is Niles." He's like, he's like, what would, what would I be like? He's like, you'd be perfect. It is, and it's like, yeah, Niles, Niles wins. Yeah. Niles wins always. It is funny when you're when you have somebody you like, and then you're talking to somebody else, and they like drop little hints that maybe you shouldn't like that person so much. It's like, well, wait, hold on, what do you know that I don't that mm-hmm. I don't know? I I like this characterization of Niles a lot because most of the comic, most of the recent comics with Niles is he's straight up just a bad person, mm-hmm. uh, and I like this that it's like, hey, he's not a great person, but he's not a it's complicated. Now it's complicated. And he I might like do some good things more often than some bad things or the other way around. Mm-hmm. Unclear. Unclear. It is unclear. It might just all be for him in the end. Because mm-hmm. yeah. in the end, it doesn't even matter. So for me, I'd give it a 9 we out of 10. We sing the same song or we sing different Put my trust in you. Yep, we are singing the same song. Mm-hmm. i give it a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10 as well. Mm. Had a little beard, little goopies coming out of the sink. Eight point five. Eight point five. Had mm-hmm. little goopies. You guys know I I already rated this in our other one, so I just made it look like I'm really thinking, but mm-hmm. really I was thinking, what did I already give? Mm-hmm. This? So, so if, if you want a genuine rating 
from all of us. Click up there. Boom. Ooh. Right up there. I can measure it now because I have a little feed where I can see myself. <laughs> but, gang, thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe here and at YouTube.com slash Might Be Awesome. We have content coming out every week like Game of Thrones Deep Dives. That's why that poster is back there. Mm -hmm. And extra content on Patreon.com slash Only Stupid Answers. Mondays. Also, deep dives into nerdy stuff. Video game content. Into movie content. <laughs> Avengers uh, Endgame stuff is coming out very soon. That's very exciting. Yeah, so you don't want to miss out. Any final thoughts? DJ, where are you at? DJ Talks Trash. Roxy, where are you at? At Roxy Stryer. Sam, where are you at? At Sam Basher. And might be social everywhere that matters. So find it, follow it, love it, share it, and make sure you keep drinking water. All right. We love you, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.